And doctor, however, like I sometimes I get patients, you know, they just come like on a, like a, just for a two reason they come. Mm-hmm. But they really when I tell them that you know this Invisalign about their what they need, mm-hmm. and they really like they wanted to start. But the the second thing comes up, no, we are traveling now. How we will continue there? Mm-hmm. So how about this doctor? Again, we have had so many patients regarding the, yeah. the, on this level, right? So the patient comes here. and uh, like you, as you said the patient is here only for a few days yeah. so we can take the scan if the patient is really interested mm-hmm. to start with us um, we can take the scan take the photos do the plan get the aligners and ship it to them okay, okay so it's it's uh, and we have done this uh, done this many time over sometimes they have their friends or family who are visiting dubai they will they will take it uh, with them along with them and they can keep wearing them and thankfully with uh, you know online connectivity like zoom and many other apps we can remotely monitor them to make sure that everything is uh, going good if they have any doubts we can clear them and so on and so forth now if we uh, there's another scenario and this has happened over and over again we have patients whom we started off the nose line yeah but after a few months later now for life happens right like yeah. so they uh, people move around Yeah. So these days uh sometimes uh they my patients say like oh I'm back going back to my country or I got a b- yeah. better opportunity in another place True. they're going back. So how do we do this? Now we we provide our patients with multiple options. One of them is like again uh remote monitoring remote and monitoring. and shipping if they like us. So uh we tell them um once you finish of the aligners then you can visit any of the dentist. get a scan send it to us and then we'll process the rest and then ship all the aligners to you this is one option another option is that there is a treatment transfer form ah uh, okay transfer form so what what this form indicates is that i as a provider as the, uh, my patient's uh, doctor i have no objection in transferring the file or the insulin treatment to another dentist of her choice mm-hmm. so the patient where no matter where they are in the world like they can they can go and interview the dentist and see uh, whom they are com- comfortable with and then uh, show them the transfer form mm-hmm. all the case files that's on my desk will be transferred on onto other doctor's desk and from there on the doctor can take care of the patient so the invisalign cost treatment the first dentist in this case it will be us we would have already paid for it which means there will be no more invisalign charges charge. except that doctor might charge uh, a service fee service fee yes. okay. we do also get a lot of patients who have traveled uh, from yeah. overseas or here and they want to continue the treatment with us yeah. uh, it's not only for them it's if say for example if uh, there is a clinic which is shut they started treatment for some reason the clinic had to close shut down yeah. or the doctor had to leave yeah. so again life happens so many things can uh, happen so in this case then uh, they only need the transfer form they can come uh, to they can find another dentist and then continue the treatment with them so it's it's very easy now these days to take there's a lot of flex- flexibility that the invisalign offers and uh, convenience for the patients understanding that our patients are always traveling always on the move so they uh, this and most of the uh, treat time the insulin treatment is a long journey it's a, in some cases it can take up to one year maybe even more to complete as is complex cases can take well over a, a year treatment to complete so uh, we never know what is it, but uh, the clinic and the insulin has our patients protected in mm. in what was so there is no reason why the patient has to drop out of the insulin treatment uh, just because of the of the inconveniences or anything like that so it's always there. and uh, doctor uh, we were talking some time back about you know the timing the wearing about the retainer that that was like about the kids but do you find some adults who who are not consistent about wearing the uh, the even the liners yeah so. yeah many times most of uh, yeah <laughs> So one of the things that I do is um I even though, see we can give all the aligners to our patients and yeah. tell them the only problem there is uh the patients will have to be very co- uh, committed to the treatment but most most time when I call the patients uh, on a regular basis uh, uh to check up to make sure that they ally- the teeth are tracking according to the plan that we have devised um, what I also do is I show them where they started and where they are and where they're going Okay. So what this happens is like the patient when they see oh their efforts were not in vain. 
okay so whatever they if they put the efforts in it shows on the result this should be some kind of motivation for the patients to keep going keep, it keep. is working yeah. because the movements of the inner line is very subtle it's mm-hmm. very small that when you keep looking at the mirror every day you will not find them you will not see them yeah. but after 3 uh, months of inner line wear and when i show them the journey from first to 3 months later it's a huge leap uh-huh. then there's really oh so much has happened they didn't even uh, most of them d- uh, didn't even realize some of my patients like uh, over a period of time they tell like their friends or family or someone who has not seen them for a long time they have noticed that some changes have happened yeah, so this are this are a few instances that has happened but this also shows one more thing how much of your smile is actually noticed by your friends family members and all that <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah this is not from one patient this is from many patients right okay. so then i realized how many how many of your parents or your siblings or your friends actually know each and every corner of your smile the gaps or the <laughs> twisted tooth or angled teeth everything and uh for the patients it came as a surprise for them that they, they many people have noticed how the smile went like and uh. therefore got how this went you know <laughs> until i showed them that's right. okay this is how their teeth are from yeah. before and this is how they are now okay. it was like a very funny experience for them like oh my god so much have changed uh, there has been also instances where uh, one of my patient like she did whitening and all that and she, uh, her teeth are generally very good so with a little bit of whitening it looks like very nice very beautiful so she was having this uh, zoom conversations uh, with her family and friends and you know multiple this one and uh, uh the fr- friends i think really one of the nurses said you did veneers and she said no i didn't do veneers i just did the inner line and this white and matted no 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 you're lying you did veneers <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. so she was uh, happy that they think that they are veneers okay. but uh, it's uh, you know th- so that's how much people actually notice notice yes yeah. so the and they were scolding her why did you win you so you spoil your teeth and everything yeah. and she had tough time explaining that this are not me this is my natural teeth i didn't do anything <laughs> i just alized it okay. that's it and and believe it or not it's not from one patient it's from a uh, few multiple patients who shared the same uh, kind of experience okay. so that's how many patients uh, have this got good results excellent much better than what i thought it would be now always i tell my patients so on the inner slide we can see that before and after yeah okay so even before we start the treatment we are showing them okay this is how you are and this is how you are going to be so okay. we show them <laughs> but i also tell the patients do not expect it to be 100% like this you it might be you we might get around 95 90% to 95% correction but there will be like 5% of areas that may not be correct when patients accept it right they accept. yeah true but there are cases which actually surprise i mean surprise me as well like how beautifully it uh, uh, finished okay. really, really, really perfectly and they all had one thing in common and that is the inverse line wear they were very disciplined oh okay. and they wore it on time okay. uh, all the time and they were very dedicated to it so yeah. that's it then i tell them that says it like it's and believe it or not these are the patients i didn't even need to do have to do any refinements for them huh? i didn't i didn't have to give them any correction aligners any additional aligners for their aligners, nothing is like yeah. we went directly to the retainers i asked them obviously i asked them patients like do you want anything more correction they said no i'm very happy everything is perfect they asked me what do you think i can't like i'm even more happy than you are here <laughs> this <is> perfect <laughs> okay. so then we go in and uh, we do the retainers and so Mm, and this is what i tell my patients okay. the more you wear the perfect the results will be now insulin recommends 22 hours in a day yeah this is the high and uh, at least 20 hours uh, 22 22 hours have to be worn okay. to have it as perfect as possible and the regular visits to the dentist to ensure okay. that the teeth are tracking or progressing according to the care okay but insulin does give some kind of flexibility say uh, you're wearing it 22 hours in a day 20 hours 22 hours in a day but there is one such day that you are going for a uh, coffee meeting with your boss or your friends or someone and you're not comfortable wearing them yeah. because it's a, it's a kind of a event place or something that you and there's a co- constant snacking or something like that 
for it's okay to uh, not to wear them for two hours or something. Enjoy your time, enjoy your events, come back in and then put them on back on, and that's okay. And this yeah. is uh, this is the beauty of insulin again it's compared true. to the braces. Braces you cannot remove them. Yeah. With this you have the flexibility of okay maybe for some time you can do it. Go enjoy your event, come back in and start uh, start again. That's okay. Sometime here and there is okay, but if you are talking about everyday thing mm-hmm. that you are not wearing it at all, or you are wearing only a, on a very limited uh, eight hour, ten hour, it's not enough. That's not enough, right? No. And the uh, doctor, I wanted to know about like you know, few cases like reti- uh, sorry, uh, aligners. Some patients we tell them to wear for seven days, some patients ten days, even some patients for two weeks. No. Okay. How like how like we have to see what cases needs what particular time period? Okay. Uh, so if it's a small minor movements, then seven days are good. Okay. If it's a very small move. Now, see there are different types of movements. Some some teeth moves. Uh, I mean, there's sideways movements, yes. forwards, backwards movements, and all. These are easy movements for the invisalign. So this kind of movements uh, need very li- less or little effort from the inner slime. So this can be seven days or ten days. I would not say seven days. Ten days is better. Ten, ten days is better. better. But once they finish the first initial round of inner slime, and then when we go for a refinement stage, and it's like very tiny, tiny corrections, in these cases, I can tell them to go for seven days. Now, if it's a very complex case. With a lot of uh, rotation, crowding, heavy um, bite, cross bite uh, issues, bite is not proper. Uh, there's a lot of hard work for the inverse line to work out. Then I would tell the longer, like 14 days or even more, is better because this will give enough time for the aligner to work on the teeth to move into its position. Okay. Because less of the time it might work. But sometimes uh, when they go for the next aligner, the fitting might be an issue. So if I tell, if it's someone who's in a hurry to finish off the aligners, then I tell them, so you can wear it after 10 days. If the next one, next aligner is not fitting in, uh-huh. then they will need to go back to the previous aligner, mm-hmm. wear it for an additional five more days, and then try again. So oh. that, so this this way they can have here and that little bit of flexibility. But if it's a very uh, difficult case, I tell them two weeks. True. But it's uh, uh, moderate to simpler cases than 10 days. If it is just a refinement stage, like very tiny moments, then seven days is also okay. Refinement. Yeah. So doctor, suppose complex cases are there. Okay, so if you're telling them uh, two weeks. So each aligner has to be for two, two weeks, weeks, right? Yes. Each aligner, no? each aligner, starting from the first aligner till the... uh, till uh, almost to the end. To the end, Almost right? to the end, because okay. towards the end, maybe the teeth are almost getting aligned now mm-hmm. and from then on, the movements are very less. So in this case, and now that's another thing about MS line, on the software, it will show the amount of pressure that each aligner will give on what area. Oh. So I get to see this all on the inner slide. So d- when the patient is towards the end, and when I see the, the pressure is much lesser, it's only on one or two teeth and there's like small minor movements, then I can tell the patient, like now, from now, from today onwards, you can wear it for 10 days. Okay. And you can reduce the time. So that, like this kind of flexibility can be given. But sometimes after a big long movements of mm. the teeth, uh, I would still take it slow. Take it slow. Because uh, the, it was a heavy movements. Yes. It's not a mild movement, it's a heavy movements. Heavy movements means that teeth has moved, had to move from a bit more longer distance from one point to the other. So when the teeth moves, uh, not only the teeth, the gums, the bone, the muscles, the nerve, everything has to relocate. It's like it's like you're moving a house. You move a house, but your luggage, your, yeah, everything has to reach the house. And then once in your new house, you, you, it will take some time for you to set the place up. Yeah. Uh, you need to, you know, uh, put the frames up there. You need to put uh, the new furniture place or something. How long will it take to settle down in a new place? Maybe a two, few months, two, three months. So the same thing happens with the teeth. With the, when teeth. the teeth moves, the whole of the, uh, uh, you know, the muscles, the bone formation, everything, it takes time. It takes uh, three months or more. So if you are speeding it up at the end, I, I would rather keep it as long as possible mm-hmm. in, in, in the, the tooth in the position so that the body, our body knows that this is the new position of the tooth. And then the bo- our body will start rebuilding 
new bone structure and everything around that root of that. That's why sometimes during the process <laughs> of Invisalign, during the process of uh, uh, braces, you will see that the tooth has a mild mobility. I was just about to ask only, like, have you ever like found any tooth is little bit mobility after the heavy, you know, yes. force and uh, it's normal. It's normal, right? It's normal. It's normal. Uh, because that is hmm. so. When the tooth moves, hmm. there is some kind of inflammation around the yeah. Okay, yeah. around the bone, the bone loosens up, and that's the only way the tooth can move. Yeah. Okay, so the bone loosens up, hmm. the to uh, tooth moves, and it will take some time for the new bone to adapt to the roots. So it will, till then the tooth can be a slightly bit wobbly, okay. but nothing to worry about. It'll it'll get firm on its own. On its it, own, uh, straightforward. There will be no problems at all. Okay. But we should not play with it. Ah. So if you feel if you see that the tooth is moving and if you keep rocking and oh. moving, you are not allowing the tooth to be stable. Stable yeah, in the and position. Yes, this kind okay. of okay. So generally, doctor, how many days it takes for stabilizing? Uh, again, it varies from people to people, age okay. to age. A uh, um, lot of a uh, lot of concerns are there, right? For children, it is very fast. Correct. For adults, it will take longer. Okay. It could take maybe one month, one month, or maybe even three months uh, for it to be stable in its to become more and more stronger. Okay. But no more movements. If, mm -hmm. if there is a continuous movement, then it will still be wobbly. Mm -hmm. The movement will only stop once all the active movements are done. Ah, and, active movement. Yeah, and the patient is on retainers. Retainers. So that will that is the one that will help the teeth to be stable in his new place. And doctor, what about re uh, I wanted to know about refinement. Mm -hmm. We were talking about refinement. So each and every case requires refinement, or how? Oh, like I said before, if the patient is wearing the insulin yeah. on a, a regular basis, mm. and uh, the, the result is uh, as we predicted to be. Mm. It's all perfect, and uh, if the patient has no other further this one, then no need for refinement. So need, right? No need to go for refinement. However, most of the Invisalign packages do give us uh, refinement sets. Okay. This is uh, because uh, Invisalign knows that the patients will not wear it completely thoroughly and all that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So at the end, we will need some correction, some small, small, tiny corrections. Okay. We will always be required. So that's why Invisalign has allowed us. Uh, this refinement additional uh, sets in order to correct some of the uh, tooth that has not completed its movement. Okay. That's, a, that's when we remove, we use them. Or unless uh, once they finish of the Invisalign and then uh, later on they feel like they need further uh, treatments. And most of the time I found this in where the teeth are little positioned outwards. Outwards. Yeah, where the teeth are positioned outwards. Uh. Um, so now, in the simulation, it's difficult to tell how their facial appearance have changed uh, with the teeth. So, if the teeth are propliant outside, mm. it has, I mean, with the line, we have uh, uh, pushed it back enough. But we don't, that's only software, but we don't know how, how it's on the face. Okay. So, if after the completing of the aligners, if the patient feels like it's still slightly bit more propliant, if it can be pushed inside, then we can use the refinement sets to further uh, push it uh, a little bit more inside. Okay. Uh, but then I'll have to look at a uh, lot of things. See, when we look at the teeth, right? Uh, the, for the patients, it's always the teeth yeah. and the smile because that's what that's the mm -hmm. consideration. But for me, as a doctor, we look at the whole face. Maybe that tooth position is ideal for the whole face, and we don't we need not push the teeth inside more. And that that ideal position is enough for the patient. So sometimes I take a series of photographs and educate the patient okay. that this position that you have is ideal for you okay. and we don't need to further go inside. So once the patient understands that, uh, they realize that, yes, this is good, then we don't go for it. Or unless the patient says, no, I would like to still push it inside, then that's the time we go inside. Uh, another scenario is uh, when we are going for um, uh, veneers afterwards. So if after we complete the Invisalign, and we have, I, there are a few things that I look out for in terms of buy twice and everything. If it's clear, if there is enough clearance, so that I can do veneers without shaving the teeth or with very minimal touch, then I will do. It. If if I need a bit more space, then I put the patient back on the aligners, on a few more additional aligners, um. in order to get gain a bit extra space, mm -hmm. so that we can place the veneers perfectly. So this is another time that we use uh, uh, additional refinements. So there, there are again, it depends on case to case basis and okay. how, how we plan on it. 
uh, how we plan on the final position of the tooth. Now, there are a few more things that sometimes patients do come to us with. Like, uh, the teeth are all fully aligned, but there's one or two teeth that's not like perfectly aligned. And visually, it looks good. It's only with a touch or something, it's not like... Yeah, now, correct. Our teeth are not all the same shape. Hmm. Our teeth are not all in the same shape. Uh, some of the teeth are uh, thicker and thinner. Yes. So, and even the teeth next to each other can be of a slightly bit difference. Sure. So again, I have to sit down and explain to the patient <laughs> that this is... So Inusalign can only move what's like really visible on the software, on anywhere, like whatever is visible, it can move. But any s small tiny movements is very difficult for the software to catch them, to, mm. to iron it out and all that. So, so it all comes down to educating the patients. The better that I can educate the patient regarding this one, they understand it and they say, oh, because in their mind, it's like, okay, didn't finish it off well enough. But then I had to show them that from there before, where they came from. Uh, yeah. To appreciate what they have now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. once once they see that, ah, uh, okay. And then combine that with a little bit of education, like, yeah. so, like uh, what, what I see is yeah. enough, then uh, the patients are, are happy to accept.